Today's lesson is topic 13, lesson 6, equivalent fractions and decimals. Your objective for today is, I will understand how to use equivalent fractions and write fractions as decimals. The first problem we're going to learn today is, three-fourths of the students in Mr. Brown's class have a younger brother or sister. How would you write three-fourths as a decimal? If you have not already done so, go ahead and glue in your paper for today. We're going to focus on using one of the boxes specifically for this problem. The four boxes you have for your notes are these four right here. We're going to focus on one of our hundreds blocks. Remember that these are individually, there is a hundred total little boxes in my big box right here. So in order to find out what three-fourths is, I want to divide this box evenly into four groups. Let's start with doing that. I have my fraction of three-fourths. We're starting there. I know that there's 10 across every side. It is a square, which means it has to have all equal sides. So I'm going to go across one, two, three, four, five. That means that this line right here is right down the middle. It's a little off center on that first one. Okay, so that's right down the middle. Okay, that cuts my square into two different sections. Now, I want to do the same thing only going horizontal or the other direction, which leaves me with four boxes. My problem is three-fourths. I want to create three-fourths as a decimal. I automatically know if I'm focusing on a hundredths block like this that my denominator must be a hundred that I'm trying to work with. Three-fourths. So one, two, three. Three of the four boxes in here are shaded, which would be my fraction of three-fourths. So the equivalent fraction I'm trying to work with would be 3 4 is equal to what fraction with a denominator of 100? Sometimes you look at that and see the number 100 and think it's going to be too hard. But we know how to work with money. So kind of think about that and look at our hundreds block. Well, each one of those boxes is 5 by 5. We know that 5 times 5 is 25. We also know the value of a quarter is 25. Okay, if I have four boxes that are each 25, I'm going to have my total of 100. If I have four quarters, I have a total of a dollar. So I'm kind of relating all of my decimals with money that I know how to work with. It makes life easier. So you have your three-fourths here. I need to think to myself, what can I multiply times four to get myself to 100? Well, looking over here, we just said that each one of these is split up into 25. Therefore, it must be 25. 4 times 25 equals 100. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Now, I have 3 times 25. Or I think to myself, what are 3 quarters? 3 quarters is 75 cents. But if I need to, I can always set up a multiplication problem to figure that out. And I get 75. So my answer would be 75 hundredths. Now, because of what I've already learned previously, I can easily take 75 hundredths and turn that into a decimal because I know that my 5 needs to end in the hundredth place of my decimal, giving me this as 3 fourths as a decimal. We're going to try a couple more. Be sure to include these in the notes and do them on these boxes. The problems we're going to look at are right here. Write each fraction as a decimal. Three-fifths and two-fourths. Okay, those are the two fractions. We're going to start by doing three-fifths. We're going to start by doing three-fifths. I need to find an equivalent fraction that either has a denominator of 10 or 100. Remember, all of the fractions that I want to turn into decimals need to end up with a denominator of 10 or 100. Because I know my facts, I know that I can do something to 5 to get me to 10. I don't have to make it all the way to 100. So 5 times what gives me 10? Well, knowing my facts, I know that 5 times 2 gives me 10. Whatever I do the bottom, I have to do on the top. Therefore, 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 10, which written as a decimal put 6 right in the tenths place. And I use my bars to show me that. There's 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 of the 10 are shaded, so 6 tenths are shaded. My other problem was 2 fourths. 
So just like I did on this one, I need to use my boxes provided and figure out what two-fourths is written as a decimal. Again, this one is very similar to the one we already did with three-fourths. So I want to focus on my hundredths block because I know, because of my facts, that I can't do anything to four to multiply times four to get it to ten. So therefore, I have to use my denominator of a hundred. Well, I can split a tens block into four different sections. They're all even, and they each have 25 total. So therefore, if each one of these sections have 25, that tells me that 4 times 25 gets me to 100. Again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 25 times 2 gives me 50. Therefore, the fraction of this shaded part over here is 50 hundredths, so half of it. Okay, so then I need to do 50 hundredths as a decimal. I write it just like this, 50 hundredths. If I put this, I would have 5 tenths. I read it differently. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but I read it differently. But this is what this problem actually showed me, 50 hundredths, with the zero ending in the hundredths place.